is Yonaguni a quarry? Are we looking at an ancient quarry site that's fallen into the sea? Hey hunters, welcome back to my channel. I'm Johanna. I love ancient histories and mysteries. And today I just wanted to debate the really mysterious rock monument, if you can call it that, that is currently underwater uh, off the coast of Japan. It's called the Yonaguni Monument, but it's also nicknamed the Japanese Atlantis. And when you see it, you'll kind of understand why. Brief history, it was found in the 1980s, I believe, and it is 25 meters below sea level currently. And there's been debate back and forth between experts whether or not it is a man-made stone monument or whether it is a freak of nature that somehow nature has kind of crafted and sculpted this very weird thing. And to tell you the truth, I am on the fence. So I thought I would do a video sort of listing the pros and the cons, the reasons why I think it could be man-made and the reasons why I think that it could be natural. And then I guess we can all debate together and see what we see because I'm just fascinated by it. It's just so bizarre to look at. And I just, I just, I'm on the fence guys. I just can't, I can't make up my mind. When they say it is a Japanese monument, it's actually way closer to Taiwan. Look on the map here. The pink star is where Yonaguni Island is. So I pictured it being literally just off the coast of Japan, but really it's much more closer to Taiwan. It doesn't really matter, but when we're working out whether or not it was above water and when, um, if this is a sunken monument, when did it fall into the sea, why, Let's, you know, I mean the geography does, it, it is important I guess when we're debating that. You can see from just looking at it off the bat how it instantly looks a little bit weird to, to be like a natural rock. You're like okay well there's there's steps, there's shapes there, there's like right angles and ledges and it, it looks really ergonomic and sharp and is that i mean i get why people instantly look at it and you think that's a castle no wait is it the first thing i did was look at the surrounding area the, the the rock that is currently above ground and below and seeing what kind of rock is it and you can see from the images that the rock is it's kind of brittle i am in no way shape or form a rock expert but just looking at it it looks kind of like brittle and it has a lot of completely straight lines that appear naturally in nature. Like here you can see that these lines they almost look like they've been sliced by a laser but that's just how the rock is so when it when bits fall off it does leave inc incredibly like flat ledges and areas so seeing something that's kind of like at a, a seeing a flat surface like isn't out of the impossible because it's kind of how the rock crumbles and how the rock forms. You can see here like underwater and above water, it's got this very linear, stripy essence to it. So that's a point to team natural because the rock has the <laughs> has that kind of structure to it anyway. You can almost just like eat probably easily chisel a chunk off and you'd get like quite a perfect block of cheese. Well, block of rock, but you know what I mean. But then there are certain pieces like this one here which you look at and you go man that looks that looks very similar to some of the sliced rock that we see in other parts of the world damn like that's that does look like a man-made slice like you see in Egypt or um, there's a rock in the middle of the desert in Saudi Arabia that's got this like mad like laser cut through it and um, so there cer are certain parts of this site that you look at and go damn i mean it could be do that it's oh i don't know i don't know just to put a bit of perspective in this if this is a natural site if this is nature's weird and wonderful beautiful piece of art there are other places in the world that actually have incredible what looks like man-made elements that nature has provided for example the giant's causeway in ireland Looking at this blows my mind. This is a completely natural structure and they have hexagon, like 3D hexagon shapes. It's, I don't even know how nature did this and why it doesn't show up in like other places in the world. If it does, please let me know. But I wanted to put that there just to prove that it's not impossible for kind of geometric 
designs to turn up in nature. So I'm keeping that in the back of my mind while I'm looking at this because not everything geometric is man-made. Looking at some of the of the photos here, there are there are areas of, of the site which almost look like they've been hollowed out. That it looks like a um, like a swimming pool or like an arena or a theatre or it looks like I don't know how nature would have like kind of scooped out rock from from one area. I mean I don't know. I, I'm not a marine rock expert, but is it possible to completely pull out like literally pulling out a scoop of ice cream out of an ice cream tub. Does that happen in nature? I can I can appreciate how, why the rock might have fallen off the side of the monument and fallen off, but can it fall like out of a, in like a dip? Is that possible? What's interesting about the shape of Yonaguni, it's got a very unusual shape. It's very sort of rectangular and it reminds me, it's not too dissimilar to the very, very early building styles in uh, Mesopotamia, like some of the oldest structures that humans ever made. They do have a, a similar thing to them. I can see a similarity in aesthetics, that's all I'm saying. And it would be interesting whether or not these people who were building these Mesopotamian buildings, were they building it off an older style that or were they trying to replicate like an older style of monument or an older style of megalithic architecture it's similar but is it enough to say it's a copy i don't know well we're putting that in the maybe pile oh now this was interesting on youtube i found a, a video um that some I, I believe they might be russian i'm so sorry if they're not they went out to the site to investigate and they brought up this very interesting thing that there is a a cemetery I believe in japan that this is the style of tomb um, there, which have very similar, again, rectangle shapes that have like steps that don't necessarily need to be um, symmetrical. I don't know, it just seemed to have a, it was just interesting that they brought that up, that Japanese tombs happen to look somewhat similar and have that kind of oblong rectangle shape with the weird steps and the, the sort of areas. Probably a coincidence, but interesting. I don't think that this place is a tomb. There doesn't seem to be any evidence of anything being buried there or there doesn't seem to be any evidence of like human settlement at all. But that doesn't rule out that it could not have been shaped by humans. Does that make sense? But there, there's no, there's nothing to say that people were like living in or around this monument. Oh, and another thing that this particular documentary pointed out, which I thought was really interesting, was uh, I think, I don't know if this photo is to do with Graham Hancock, um, I don't want to throw him in it if it's not, but this photo of um, a suspected carved head, like a, the, the, the head or face, some sort of stone head, um, this was the image that was circling around the internet and got everybody quite excited because, okay, that definitely looks like a carved human man-made piece of art there, and if that is really there, then that's a massive piece of evidence that humans made this. Um, but the the team from the documentary, when they went down, um, they were really disappointed to find that it did not look at all like that image. And they suspect that image might have been doctored or photoshopped or sort of adjusted. They said that there are, so here's the face. Doesn't he look like Iron Man? Love it. Like, <laughs> it's just like this random Iron Man face. To me, that is not enough of a face to say that it's a sculpture because we have that thing we have that thing where humans can make faces out of things that aren't even really faces we all do it we all have that capacity it's part of some sort of survival instinct in our brain to like look out for faces in danger so we will see faces in, in inanimate objects and um, we will find sort of patterns and symmetry and things that aren't necessarily there and so when i look at this i'm not i'm not um I'm not fully convinced that it's a carved face because I think it also could, ju it's just eyes and a mouth, but anyway, talking about the, the, what appeared to be the patterns of this sort of headdress, when they arrived, um, they could find some uh, sort of shapes there, but they said that it was nothing that r truly resembled what the other photo was. I mean, it's difficult because look, you can see it's all underwater, it's getting eroded, things are growing on it, things are distorting, but they said that it did seem really rough and it didn't look like a kind of distinctively carved pattern. Which is disappointing, I was equally disappointed because I would love, 
I would love nothing more than this to be the smoking gun for ancient civilization. But I got to be fair to it. You got to be, you got to thoroughly, it's, it has to pass every single litmus test. It, it can't just be it because we want it to be it. So let's be fair. And let's be fair to nature as well. Nature's amazing. So um, you know, maybe nature made it, but again, so these things, there are lots of channels sort of in and around the whole area of the site. And this again, I, maybe I'm wrong. I, ca I, I can't find evidence of other places in the world that have this like, it, it, it looks like a carved road. It really does. Like, the the sides are so symmetrical and the bottom it it it's cut out like right to the bottom to the floor like there is a floor level there is a side wall and there is a side wall and it looks sharp it looks sliced out and that to my eyes i find that hard to believe that that is all nature that nature just moves a chunk again like what i was saying before i can appreciate if something falls off the side and creates kind of a step. I, ca I can understand how that would work, but I don't understand how nature takes a full on chunk out of out of like a brick and takes the, uh, like a, makes a road out of it. Where, where did that go? How did that get moved? Did it all come in one big go? How is it so smooth? I, th that I have to say is a point to the man-made because I can't work out in my brain how nature would do that. So here is like a computer graphic rendition of what the site looks like. Yeah, it's weird. It's It's got, there's so many shapes. There's so much going on. There are so many parts of this site that look completely natural. And then they are right next to a, a thing that looks utterly, utterly carved and human made. It's, it's, it's one of the most brain, it like, it literally hurts my brain to look at this site for too long because, because I keep seeing it in two different ways. Every time I look at it, I see it as nature, and then I see it as not. Interesting how one side seems to have like a lot more step damage than the other. Like if this, yeah, like the front of it seems to be very round and bulbous and smooth. And then there's this, uh, what would it be? The right side that seems to have like at least four or five different layers of steps. This was interesting. Um, these divers in one of the videos came across these like boreholes, which again, I don't know if these, I mean, maybe they appear in nature, maybe they do, but they instantly reminded me of the test holes that the Egyptians did in the granite in like the uh, the quarry in Aswan and other such places. So when you are quarrying and cutting rock, first they will drill down and do, do a test run to check that the quality of the rock, the location, everything's like on point before you put in hours and hours and hours of manpower. So when I saw those sort of boreholes, I was like, is Yonaguni, a quarry? Are we looking at an ancient quarry site that's fallen into the sea? So it is both a man-made nature disaster with broken bits, but it's also got some elements of human intervention where they have been taking out chunks of rock here and there, and therefore that's why the pattern is so it doesn't make sense to your head because it's not supposed to be a finished product. It is the remnants of the original source. Here's just a great picture of the side. We can see it's like super flat on the surface, super flat surfaces, and we can see chunks that do look like steps. This is where I can say, I don't think this necessarily looks man-made because I can understand how nature could, there could have been an earthquake. We don't know how this rock becomes loose, but a chunk, a whole chunk could fall off. And then the other half of me is looking at it going, well, that's just a, that's just a right angle. That's just a bloody right angle. Surely somebody hacked that off. Most of this video is just me going, I don't know. I'm hoping you guys are going to get involved. Jump in the comments, help me out. What do you think? Am I, I think if, if a lot of eyes look at this, we're all going to see this very differently. And I appreciate how some people can see things that I maybe can't see. Or um, yeah, I'm, I'm just, I'm open. I'm completely open and on the fence about this topic. So I'd love to hear what you think in the comments. Convince me, unconvince me. I don't mind. <laughs> oh, interesting thing. So... Robert Schock in the 90s, I think, he came to visit the site and he concluded as a geologist that he thought it was a natural site, which is interesting because he's pro the Sphinx being super old. So I thought that was cool and objective of him. He's not just trying to make every site in the world 
fit the narrative of his theory. Like, you know, he's going to call a spade a spade. If it's not right, it's not right. So he thought that it was a natural site. And Graham Hancock, I think, believes is on the other side of the party and he thinks that it is a man-made site. But one thing that is a total mystery that both sides have to acknowledge, where is the rock that has fallen off or been moved by humans? Uh, maybe you can't see down here, but at the at the base surrounding the monument, we you can't find the corresponding chunks of rock. Where did they go? And some of these are absolutely massive megalithic pieces of rock. They should be, in theory, at the bottom. If they've fallen off through an earthquake or a tsunami, whatever, where are they? If nature has pulled them off, where are these like corresponding Lego bricks of rock that should be fit back on? When you see cliff faces um, and things, uh, rock faces underwater, you can see the corresponding chunks of rock that have fallen off, but these ones they're missing. Where are they? What's happened to them? This particular area geographically apparently gets like a lot of water activity because it's got like the Chinese sea coming down from the north and then it's also got like the, the ocean coming in. Apparently this is kind of where it meets. So there's a lot of, there's a lot of traffic. There's a lot of activity. Obviously Japan is known for being super seismic. So you can only imagine the activity that could be going on, but still they should be kind of, they should be there or locatable in the immediate vicinity. Where are they? Where have they gone? So if this place was a quarry, obviously they wouldn't be there because they would have been like quarried away. But then I was thinking, well, where's the site that they use that for the quarry? Like surely there would be monuments around that you'd be able to test to see if it was the same rock. Ah, here it is. Here's the image I was looking for. So the um, here is the like scan of of the area. Yes. So where are these massive square chunks that we should be finding at the bottom? There, they, they aren't there. Um. Also, I'm really interested on this like extremely rectangular structure that is just off from on the right of the image in the middle. Like that looks like. <laughs> That, that looks freaking man-made to me. That is so rectangular and perfect. I wanna go down and see that. Like, what what is going on? I mean, seeing, looking at this as a, as a structure, as like a working temple or a tomb, to me, it does seem a bit too higgledy-piggledy and a bit too random. The idea that I'm looking at the remains of an old quarry where they were literally hacking out bits and bits makes sense as to why one side is more hacked out than the other. It makes sense as to why all of the detail tends to be focused on one side and not the other because that was the site of like the working rock. I'm not completely ruling out the fact that it's not very symmetrical and it's a bit higgledy-piggledy because I'm basing that on megalithic structures that I know from Egypt or other places which tend to be fairly symmetrical. Pyramids, they're all like ergonomic. But looking at other images of megalithic work in Japan, don't seem to be so concerned with perfect, precise symmetry. So there's this place which is called the Devil's... The Devil's Toilet? I don't... <laughs> this has got a funny name. But again, this has got like weird rectangular, doesn't need to be the same, the sides aren't perpendicular to themselves. I don't know. I felt like there was a theme. This dude got a weird triangle cut into the side, bit with like kind of edges and ledges. And again, it's just, it's just, your eyes look at it and go, that is weird, but it's not symmetrical. This thing here kind of got like steps. I imagine if you measured that, it's not like completely accurate. There just seems to be like, you've got things that are cut and channeled in here, but then the ed the edges are left like nature and bulbous, which is why di maybe it didn't matter that one side was cut into and the other side was left natural because other monuments in Japan seem to have similar things. There's a fly. So one of the big like smoking guns for this site is that there's a thing called the turtle, which has, it's like a kind of platform on the top and it has this like triangle shape sticking out, which again, I'm looking at it and I'm going, that's pretty unusual for nature to, to do that. That does look like someone's come and chiseled that out, not gonna lie. And that is looking kind of similar to what I just showed you. Nope. There, it's got that like triangle shape that isn't replicated on the other side, just that one-sided triangle. Anyway, you see where I'm getting at with this. You also have to be very careful when you're researching this thing online, unless you've gone and seen it for your own eyes. Everything changes depending on the angle that you're looking at it from. So this picture, it seemed incredibly 
man-made and chiseled and whatnot. When you see it from the above angle or the side angle, it doesn't look so man-made and you can you can go oh, I can I can see how nature did that so that is the problem with this entire site when you look at it from certain ways and certain angles the imagery looks incredibly it's almost like it's just ridiculous to say that nature made it you're like this is obviously a human made this when you look at it from other angles you're like oh I'm sorry that I don't have like conclusive evidence in this video but I just thought I wanted to put I just wanted to make a video of the kind of the pros and cons, the twos and falls and whatnots, because a lot of videos are either this is the Japanese Atlantis or this is absolutely nature. And I feel like it's fair to make a video of it could be either or or both. Well, thank you very much for watching. I will be diving into the comments to have a fierce debate with all of you about this because I need to know. I wish that I could go to Japan and look at this myself. I can't dive because I've got ridiculous ears that I'm, I'm not allowed to go diving that i've got like ear pressure problems with my broken ears so um i actually can't ever go down and see this myself so i rely entirely on videos and research from other people you guys if you're new here hello welcome please stay become a, a member of the band um by subscribing or if you actually want to be a member of the band then you can actually get band merch and you can join the copper chisels which is my fake ancient history mystery band, <laughs> rock band. Um, I'll leave a little link in the description where you can buy uh, Copper Chisel merch because a lot of you are joining now and it's super awesome. Yeah, you can also find me in other places on the internet like Facebook and Instagram at Funny Old World. I hope you have an amazing week. I will see you very soon. My trip to Egypt is coming up imminently. So I might be having a little bit of a break on here while I go off gallivanting around the world and filming up close pyramids and everything for you guys. Of course you're coming with me. So that's gonna be really exciting. Bye now. <laughs> I can never end YouTube videos. It's like the most awkward thing.